Hello, Chimera, and welcome to my review for Power 33. This is the extended cut version. I just finished watching this movie now on Blu ray. Of course, I do have my copy. Awesome. Now, the reason I'm going to be watching all four Power 33 movies is that the uh, Power 33, the marked ones, the spin off movies coming out the 1st of January, I'm going to watch it with my mate next week. Uh, apparently, it's meant to be very good. It's got uh, like a redefining twist. And if you see my trailer review, you see how excited I was for it. It looked pretty good. Got that kind of chronicle powers with shotguns and all that type of thing. So it looks it looks going in a different direction. I look forward to seeing where they can take this franchise into a better place and kind of redefine it like, you know, Fast and Furious Diet did. I'm not a huge fan of Paramount Activity. If you've seen my reviews, especially within some of like, the more found footage reviews, you know, I'm not a fan of this franchise, in all fairness. I think it's a bit boring. It relies too much on the jump scares and night vision stuff. You know, for me, that doesn't justify good horror. That's just a bit cheap, I think, perfectly honest. But I'm going to give it a chance again. I'm going to watch all four movies and give my full opinions on them and hopefully you know, that'll change my opinions. Now the third one I'm going to start with mainly because it's a prequel set from the f before the uh, first two movies and apparently it's going to be the best out of all four movies currently available on Blu-ray and DVD and um, I got, I safe to say that it is true. It is definitely well done for a good solo movie and a good connection with the other movies. So let's talk about Power 33, the extended version. <laughs> So Power Duty 3 is released in 2011. The storyline for this movie follows an origin story uh, set before the first two movies, uh, following like you know what actually is going on with the whole demon, you know thing with the whole you know possessing Katie within the first movie and you know terrorizing these two sisters uh, within the events of the first two movies, and it's giving like an explanation, a reasoning for what's going on, and something for the franchise to move forward to. Now, as a nice actual standalone movie, I would say if you haven't seen any of the Power and movies, you can definitely watch this by itself. I've only seen the first one and bits of the second and bits of the fourth. I haven't really seen much of the third one, and I figured I'll give it a chance. It's supposed to be the best of the, of the whole four movies, and I can say I can safely say that it's definitely the most entertaining. It definitely has the most, you know, good characters and has some pretty decent jump scares in places. Um, it has a few problems we're going to mention later on, but as an actual standalone movie, and as an actual prequel, you know, origin story, I think it's very satisfying as a movie by itself, and I think it works uh, to somewhat degree. You know, for an hour and a half movie, it does what it does, it sets out to do. At the same time, it still has that kind of paranormal activity kind of, you know, style, which, you know, can get a bit boring and, you know, the problem is with the Power Duty franchise, for me anyway, it just doesn't grab your attention, you know, from like start to finish, well, unlike other movies like Grave Encounters and even like, you know, The Devil Inside was very gripping from start to finish, I felt that was quite enjoyable, um, you know, for a one-off movie. But nevertheless, I did actually really enjoy the third movie, I felt it was um, very cool in some of the places. One thing I'm definitely going to say about this movie is characters. Characters are absolutely fantastic. You have some of the most nicest people, nicest people to kind of watch and enjoy their kind of character, their personalities on screen. He got the, kind of this kind of like stepdad that's you know videotapes at weddings you know, as, a, as a VHS kind of thing being set in the 80s. I really like that kind of thing. I think it was really really cool how they did that. I think he's a really nice character. He got the wife also, which is a really nice mother. You know, um, got some good comedy scenes between your know, character development places. The kids are really nice and not annoying, which can be a bit in some of the movies. You know, when you get kid actors, um, I think it's got an underlying kind of subplot that's going on which I'm not going to say much of if you haven't seen the movie for, you know, for spoiler reasons. But um, yeah, as an actual movie, I felt it was done very well. I actually was enjoying it m mainly for the actual acting and mainly for the characters, you know. And it's a shame these characters got put through the situation of like a demon practically, you know, screwing up their, you know, nights in a sense. I felt that was a bit funny in a way. But um, the jump scares I felt were... Uh, somewhat pretty appropriate, somewhat like, you know, personally, you know, 
the the actual, now the actual scares I felt were actually pretty appropriate in most places. I felt they timed them just right. They, they, they allowed enough tension building up between the scenes, especially with the night vision cameras. You know, typical Paramount TFD style. They have like the night vision set up and that type of thing. And you know, you kind of like as you as an actual viewer watching it, seeing if anything's happened between the background, and you kind of know something's going to happen soon, especially for that first time watch. And uh, you're just looking out for sounds, little creepy things, kind of thing like happening going along, or you see a door open, you see what's behind that door, things like that, you see. And um, I felt the uh, jump scares were very well appropriate. Some were pretty impressive, I have to admit. I like to know how technically they did that, and some I felt were very like quick, nice, snappy ones, which I felt was very good. The third act of the movie, I especially liked the most, uh, mainly because it reveals a certain kind of revelation of the actual origins, and. For me, um, I, I like to have like you know an actual physical villain in a sense. You know, I'm not going to give away too much just in case you haven't ruined it. Type, but you know, keep by now you probably have seen the movies. But for people that haven't watched it like me or not really bothered, you know, I like to have a physical villain, like something that I can actually say that is the explanation for. For me, an invisible demon doesn't cut it, you know, I need something more than that, just a moving sheet, it doesn't scare me, it doesn't thrill me, and in places the movie does actually lose my attention, I'm like wandering, looking at my phone, whatever, but there is places which I'm actually like, hmm, shit just got real, especially towards the third act, and good portions of like, the, even some of the daytime stuff is actually pretty scary, some of the nighttime stuff, I have to make the whole Bloody Mary sequences in the mirror, but Character development were very, very strong with the girls, uh, the, you know, the husband and wife. Um, I like the, the jump scares in places. I think some of the technical work was very impressive. Camera looks very impressive. The whole kind of third act revelation twist kind of thing was very well done. I, I like that explanation. It makes sense. And of course, it continues with on the fourth movie. And of course, it will continue with the spin-off movie as well. The movie itself, I think, is a pretty good standalone movie. Works well. Does exactly what it sets out to do. It does have problem in its places with the whole, you know, extending certain scenes. But it is tension building. It is setting up certain scares and it's keeping you on edge, which is a good thing, of course. But at the same time, it does lose my attention in places. I found camera sequence where I thought that was pretty impressive, and yeah, the whole just you know as, as a whole movie done very very well. Just a couple of little problems in places. But apart from that, very enjoyable. So that's been my review of Power 23, the extended version. I hope you enjoyed watching this review. What did you think of Power 23? Love to know your opinions, comment down below. So in the meantime, Andrew Fimini from Game TV, signing out. <laughs>